Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Cindy Stewart and I'm joined by Deneen Owens sharing music today. We are glad that you could join us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So let us sing. Jesus, name above all names. hearts for the Word of God, we hear from the scriptures Acts chapter 10 verses 39 through 48. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come out with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So we ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. May God add a blessing on the reading, hearing, and understanding of this holy word. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. People have a warped sense of Christianity, said rock star by the name of Vincent Damon Furnier, who grew up with an evangelist grandfather and a pastor who was his father. Now, even though he grew up in the church, he went far from it as he was able, and he almost died from the decisions that he made because of his lifestyle. His journey back to faith surprised many people, Yet we know that faith, faith in Christ changes people's lives, doesn't it? In this post-Easter season, we are claiming what Jesus can do in our sermon series, Good News. This was inspired by the Alpha Course's lesson, Why and How Should I Tell Others?, where we are being challenged to tell people what we think about our faith in Jesus Christ. So we are embracing one point each week, the first point was presence, and last week's point was persuasion. The presence of Jesus Christ makes a difference in our lives, and just as the early Christians used persuasion to share the good news with others, we can also. So our third point and our focus for this day is proclamation. Now, we have to admit that when we think about proclamations, we probably think about historical proclamations. 
We think about important statements that have established boundaries and even important statements that have broken the bonds of slavery. Right now, though, we may be thinking about proclamations that are made by government and health officials, establishing stricter boundaries and preventing guidelines from being broken. In fact, right now we're all wrestling with what it means to reopen businesses and what it looks like for churches to reopen in the future. Though Pastor Joe and I miss seeing many of you face to face, we recognize how important it is for us to keep practicing social distance, social spaciousness as we call it, and to stay home as much as, we are, as, much as possible, to wear masks in public places. We remember that none of us has ever done this before. We are trusting, praying, and hoping for normal to return at just the right time. Now let's admit that proclamation has a very different meaning when we think about the Christian faith. And this isn't something that people tend to talk about a lot. Honestly, it's really easy for us to say, hey, I'm not an evangelist. Yet we have to admit that each of us has been called to be a witness. As we have witnessed God's love and grace through Jesus Christ, we are called to proclaim this to others. Now we have some great examples in the biblical witness about those who proclaimed their faith, including Simon Peter. As one of those in the inner circle of disciples who followed Jesus, he knew what it was like to walk with Jesus and to talk with Jesus. He knew what it was like to argue with Jesus and also what it meant to become a witness for him. So what precedes our passage is this amazing vision that Peter has. He was told to kill and to eat, but before him, he saw animals that were impure and unclean. Peter knew that he could never kill and eat what is um, impure and what is unclean. His religion had taught him that. But he was reminded that he shouldn't call anything impure or unclean that God himself had made clean. Peter was then told that there were some people who were looking for him. They had come from the house of the centurion named Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was a commander of a hundred men in the Roman army. He had power and he had authority. Even so, we are told that he was God-fearing and that he was righteous. And as he was respected by the Jewish people, obviously he was a man of great integrity. And so, imagine this situation where Peter has just had this amazing vision and he has had this request to come and to visit Cornelius. This vision that Peter had then gave him a new perspective about what was clean and unclean. There had been rules about Jews associating with Gentiles. So now Peter was enlarging his understanding of what the gospel means and also what it would mean to speak to the Gentiles. And so he went to Caesarea. And Cornelius called together all of his relatives and friends. Imagine that, that as this happened, Cornelius just started calling people and saying, Hey, come and talk. I've invited this man to come and visit with us. It was then that Cornelius shared his story about how he was praying. And while he was praying, he has what could only be described as a spiritual experience. He saw this man who was clothed in shining clothes and told Cornelius that he should go and he should send for this man called Simon, who is also called Peter. Peter then proclaimed that faith in God doesn't show any favoritism and that faith accepts from every nation those who respect and those who honor God and do what is right. And this included Cornelius. Peter then proclaimed that the good news of peace is through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Remember again that, that Peter had to have this amazing experience in his faith journey that allowed him to proclaim this good news for others. He and the other apostles were witnesses to everything that had happened with Jesus. Jesus died on the cross, and yet God had raised Christ on the third day. And eyewitnesses saw him with their very eyes. 
and they even ate with him. What the prophets foretold was true, and those who believed in Jesus Christ could have the forgiveness of their sins. This testimony that Peter gave, the whole house of Cornelius was suddenly filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. What? The Holy Spirit could even fall on the Gentiles? Peter seized this opportunity to baptize Cornelius' household, a family, and friends in the name of Jesus Christ. And in turn, they asked Peter if he would stay with them for a few days. No doubt continuing to share stories of, of God's love and grace and how it could be lived out in terms of the life of faith. Isn't this a great story? The Spirit gave Peter a vision that opened his mind, his heart, and his soul to the expansion of the gospel message to the Gentiles. And as that Spirit was already working in Cornelius's mind, heart, and soul, he sent for Peter, who proclaimed the faith in such a way that he and his entire household could believe and accept it for themselves. We have to remember again that good news travels fast. And yet, we also have other great examples of, of those who proclaim the faith, don't we? The Apostle Paul knew exactly what it meant to take the good news to other nations. He simply shared the story about when he was Saul, persecuting the Christians, and how he became Paul. We do consider Paul to be one of the greatest evangelists that ever lived. In the Alpha Course, Nikki Gumbel shares listeners about a farmer's son who was invited to drive a van for people who were going to a revival many, many years ago. This young man who drove the van went back each and every night. And on the last night, he went forward at the front and he gave his life over to Christ. Since that day, that man proclaimed the faith to over two million people. Now we all can't be Billy Graham, and yet we can be the person who invites others to come and to see what this faith is all about. So what about you? You might not think about yourself as an evangelist, but you are called to be a witness to what you have experienced in your own life. Six weeks in a row, we are being reminded of what it means to share our stories. Again, it has to do with our presence, just being there with, with others who are on a faith journey. And we do it with persuasion, persuading others with our own stories. Last week, I challenged our church family members and friends to write down their faith story. Now, if you didn't get that done, I invite you to just do it. But even if you did, I want you to continue to think about the following questions. What does your witness of the faith look like? Who witnessed the faith to you? Was it grandparents or parents? Or was it even a friend? And then, what was the turning point in your life when you realized that faith in Christ meant something and could be exactly what you needed and what you wanted in your life? Two years ago, I was pleasantly surprised to read the words, people have a warped view of Christianity, from Vincent Damon Furnier, who is better known as Alice Cooper, the godfather of shock rock. Now from my opening, remember that Alice Cooper's grandfather was an evangelist and his own father was a pastor. And even though he grew up in the faith, he went away from it until he needed it most. Cooper had to reconcile his past with his newfound faith. So he said about Christianity, and I quote, they, the people, think it's all very precise, and we never do wrong, and we're praying all day, and we're right wing. It has nothing to do with that. When Cooper was on a path, of addiction and alcoholism, and he watched his friends dying, he simply turned to God. And according to Alice Cooper, what does Christianity have to do with? He said, 
It has to do with a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. Exactly. Christianity is all about Jesus. Can you say that with me? Christianity is all about Jesus. So what proclamation can we make? We can proclaim that a relationship with Jesus gives us freedom from guilt and from addiction and from fear. But we can also claim that a relationship with Jesus gives us freedom to know God, to love, and to change. What we proclaim about Jesus makes a world of difference. So be it. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we want to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. We want to experience that freedom from guilt and from addiction and from fear. We want to know that freedom to know God, to love and to change. Thank you for those who shared their stories with us and bless us to proclaim our stories so that others can come and see what you have done in our lives. We pray this, Jesus, remembering the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This is the first weekend of the month, so would you please join me in our great thanksgiving. Jesus Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin, and all who desire to live in communion with God and with one another. It is in that spirit that we come to this Christ's holy table. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you join me in prayer? Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in our homes and on these gifts of bread and cup before each of us. May these gifts be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit make us one with Jesus, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please take your symbols of bread and cup? Would you eat and would you drink and would you remember Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Amen. I would invite us to join in our next song and our next song is going to be Denise, help me out. He's exalted. He is exalted. Let us see.
Amen. And would you receive our benediction? Jesus does not just bring good news. He is the good news. May the risen Christ remind you of your mission to share the good news with your presence, persuasion, and proclamation. And the people of God said, Amen. Go in peace.